and welcome to another episode of More Than Dice. I'm Gonzo. I'm Blader Dragon. <laughs> and Mizzy is in the <laughs> Skype box that is not showing up right now. Uh, Mizzy had to step away to uh, go help a friend. Um, their car broke down, and so um, they're going to go pick them up and bring them home. You know, like we do. Like we always do, because we're all Absolutely. a bunch of friends. Um, so John has actually gone uh, this week. John had to go to a uh, work thing, and Kathy has a family thing that she needs to deal with. So um, V was scheduled to be on anyway, so we're just going to make sure that uh, V is here and having a good time. And then uh, Mizzy will be back shortly uh, to be on here, because she's taking Kathy's spot tonight. Um other than that, guys, we actually have a new sponsor. If you're just coming in, um, we have a new sponsor coming in, uh, Mini Masterworks. Uh, I worked, we had him on the podcast before uh, to talk about his um, his uh, hobby. Uh, ooh, I can't remember what it was called. Um, man, he's going to kick me in the teeth when I forget what it is. Um, it was uh, his uh, a Studio X mobile miniature paint station. That was what it was. Um, and he is, uh, he'll be having that pretty soon. Uh, there's been some shipping delays on it. Like all of the world is having shipping delays right now. Um, I did pick up quite a few of his products, so I will actually give you some ideas. Uh, one of the products I've been trying to get for a long time and he had one and I'm like, Oh, I really like this. I like this a lot. This is going to help me with a lot of different things. Um, but um he and i'll show a couple other products but he is now sponsoring the podcast we will have some product from him to give away and a discount code but he's just now coming back and settled at home uh from warfare weekend uh type thing uh don't forget that muse on minis is still one of our sponsors and they are going to be having some new products show up pretty soon uh, one of the things that they're going to have is new terrain for marvel crisis protocol uh, they're finalizing the deal on that and getting all the product made and stamped and et cetera, et cetera. But they're going to have some new terrain for that, uh, which will be really cool because um, it's that it's it's good, solid, um, fully printed, painted um, type ter terrain. So it'd be really good uh, to see. Uh, they have some of their infinity terrain on there, which we used uh, on a couple of tables uh, this last weekend. Um, but, um, make sure you check out both of those people. Um, uh, uh, more than, uh, blah, blah, blah. if you use more than dice, all one word on Muse on minis, you'll get a discount and, uh, we get a little kickback on that for, uh, helping out. Um, let's see. Mizzy's not back. So we're going to go keep on going. Um, we will hold off on the drinks, but we do have a shout out to do on, uh, the podcast. If anybody didn't know. Um, give me one second. I have to remember his name. I don't want to ruin it. Uh, Dean Stockwell died. Uh, if you don't know, Dean Stockwell was what everybody knows him from is Quantum Leap. Um, he was 85, so I mean, that's a, a, quite a decent amount of time to be alive. Um, but he was really good in Quantum Leap. Uh, they said that, um, no, like not a COVID thing, just natural causes. So it was really, really cool. Um, it wasn't, you know, I won't say really cool, but it wasn't, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't a, you know, a disease that got him. It was a natural causes, you know, type things, which was, you know, I, I, I guess you can be less sad about that. <laughs> uh, you know, 85 is a good age to, yeah. to get to. And you're not, you're not looking at it like it's someone who's in their 30s or 40s where it's Correct. like, oh my gosh. But it's, you know, 85 is you can you can kind of feel like yeah it's still sad and I feel bad for his family but yeah yeah and it was natural causes um but um that was the only shout out I had did you have any shout outs do you know of I didn't I don't pay that much attention there was someone else there was one other that I saw this week besides yeah. Dean Stockwell <laughs> Rath, right, Rathmore. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> so, so 85 my, is where he intends to have his midlife crisis. Yeah. So my grandma, my remaining grandparent is 104. Oh my gosh. I expect that at 85, I will also be having my midlife crisis. <laughs> um, and see. it's, it's one of those things where I, you know, I can, I can honestly say that 
my mom and I have the conversation whenever we get together that I hope it's soon because my 104 when you're not entirely there and you're just sleeping all the day and you don't want to be around that's all that's a that's a that's time she's not she's she's fine we're all fine spite <laughs> I don't know <laughs> let's see Dean Stockwell was a recent one I don't remember um, who else I saw. It was... William Lucking was recently. Uh, he was on Sons of Anarchy. He played Piney Winston. Um, I'm looking at this website that's just going to... But, I mean, there were... Oh, there was uh, James Michael Tyler, which was uh, Gunther on Friends, but I think that we already got that one that I can mm -hmm. think of. Uh, but that was about it. Um, if you know anybody, if you have anybody that needs a shout out, let us know. We'll you know give them a shout out. Um, we always want to make sure that we are taking care of each other, guys. Make sure that you are you go get your vaccine, uh, go get your booster. If it's time to get your booster, it's time for my booster. Uh, time for my flu shot too. Yeah, I probably um, do for those things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> make sure you're still washing your hands. Make sure you're wearing a mask. Uh, just make sure you take care of yourself. Um, we have HugCon 2022 coming up, a.k.a. otherwise known as Adepticon, uh, yeah. which I actually talked to some uh, one of the people from Adepticon at Warfare Weekend, and I'll go over that. Um, but um, just stay safe. Make sure that you're healthy so we can see you there, and hopefully you're going to be there because that's going to be – that's one of my main conventions I go to every year. Um, and if I get a new job, I'll have to be using my vacation for that. Um, Mizzy should be back shortly. Hopefully you have a new job by then. Hopefully. Uh, Mizzy hopefully. Not, here. Not a, not hey, a, there's not Mizzy. Let me put you back on screen. Is Mizzy back? Ah, Mizzy's yeah. back. Yay. Yay. There's Good. Mizzy. <laughs> we had you, you whenever your camera's turned off, your, a big old Skype sign shows up. So we... I, cut you off for a second so mizzy is back I see. <laughs> um so we already did our shout outs and we got dean stockwell did you have anybody else we needed a shout out for um i don't think so okay um let's get to the drinks I need to get back to drinking please yes so l l let's get to drinking uh v guest first time I'm on the show just what are you drinking water I had a soda to make sure that I don't pass out, um, but I'm drinking water because I have a piano stream tomorrow, so I try not to. You don't want to be hungover. Yeah, and I it's it's better for my voice just to drink water. Oh, you're gonna be singing too. I think so. <laughs> okay, I'll have to set that up. Uh, Mizzy, what are you drinking, and what is that cool glass you got? Mizzy has vanilla cream craft soda. And Captain Morgan Black Spiced Rum in her wow. shiny new Warfare Weekend cup. That's not a cup. Glass not thing. A, that's not a glass. Drinking that's receptacle. a pint. <laughs> Drinking receptacle. Drinking receptacle. I have one of those too. I am drinking Mother's Winter Stout, which is a coffee stout brewed very close to where I'm at. Uh, probably only a couple hours away in Springfield, Missouri. Um, and it's a really, really good coffee stout. I really like it. I one of my favorite of the year. I snuck away with a dragon's milk. Oh, did you steal one of the dragon milk? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> so other than that, um, pirate, <laughs> pirate. So like I said, guys, Yar. please take care of yourself. Please make sure that you're keeping yourself safe. Uh, get your vaccine, all that stuff. We want to see you in a bit at HugCon 2022. Um, from all of us here, cheers. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's really good. Hold on. <laughs> this is better. Oh. I need more rum. <laughs> um, so, um, we're gonna, we're gonna... Give V her time, but people have been asking about Warfare Weekend. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. I want to know about Warfare Weekend. I want it, to hear about it, it. It, it was a weekend. <gasps> Next thing. Um, so, V, you're up now. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Not enough. <laughs> okay, so we got there Wednesday night. What, 11 or so-ish? No, we, we made really good time. I think we got there at like 10. Okay. Maybe 10.30. Yeah, because we had to wait until people get off, got off work. Um, and so we got there. No, we had the... to stop by the bay because you forgot things. <laughs> I did. I forgot to get <laughs> on my way up. I got a phone call, um, about work and I forgot to stop by the bank to get petty cash, you know, for the drawer and all that stuff. So we had to find an R vest on the way up there and we found one and it was like a extra 30 minute detour. Um, so we would have made even better time if I wouldn't have forgot that. Um, so Thursday we, Got as much set up as we could, which was pretty much the entire convention. Uh, we got yep. our VIG bags packed and, um, excuse me, <clears throat> packed and a lot of stuff in it. The VIG bags were swollen with materials this year. Um, we got really good and really lucky this year with a lot of good materials. We got a ton of stuff. I got like three troop boxes. Um, we still have. Um, conquest models left by the way uh, there was quite a bit of con- there, not, there's not a lot but there was there was enough conquest models for people for next year um, I think that we got like 40 boxes left I think out of the 900 pounds of miniatures they gave us yeah they gave us you should you should wow. Mizzy, you should show her the picture of the the, the VIG or, or the, the swag I'm, area. I am finding this right now. Hang on. <laughs> and, and the sad thing is, is the picture she's probably going to show, maybe she can link it in chat, was this was after giving every 100 people two boxes. Yeah, let me see. So, so after. There's the, there's the VIG bags, and then if you scroll over, there are so much swag on the tables. And the the Parabellum Conquest picture is... It's not there. The, it's at the end, isn't no, it? No, it's not at the end either. I just went through no! it. No! I know I posted it. Where did it go? It's probably there. It's just you can't... I'll have to find out where it's at. Let me see. Wow. So our swag was really good. And then we had... Uh, I can't continue because I'm not logged in. Hang on. Maybe it's on Facebook. Let me let me check. Yeah. I know I posted it. Well, yeah, I know you posted it. She'll get the video. But the Parabella War Games sent us 900 pounds of uh, conquest models, um, and gave us like seven two-player starter sets. So it was a ton of models. Beyond belief, it was a ton of models. Um, and then all the other swag that, if you see on the Instagram, there was more swag there. And it was a lot of stuff. Uh, I worked really hard to try to get enough stuff, cool stuff. And a lot of it was, and some of the stuff was from local people. Uh, the heavy gear stuff is one of my local people, uh, Nick, which we had on the podcast. Um, and, and a lot of small business stuff. I wanted to try to do that. Uh, Privateer Press for the VIG bags gave out a um, Convergence uh, Colossal. Uh, for all the VIGs, uh, we had tons and tons. The VIG bags were, were stuffed. We had a lot of things in them this year. Um, so we got that done and we got most of the rooms and everything set up for the start of the day. Uh, got everybody checked in and, uh, on Thursday night we let people, the VIGs go to the vendor room first. Um, and that way they can buy whatever they want and be ready for the next day. There we go. There it is. Is that, is that the picture? Yeah, there it is. And that's taking out 200 boxes uh, for people that can get to Facebook. Uh, we took out... Wow. Because every VIG got two boxes uh, in there. So they took... We took... That's missing right, 200 Mo? boxes. <laughs> yeah. It was a ton of models. We uh, We took out... Uh, Because every VIG got two boxes. Uh, The VIG was 100 bags. Uh, The bags, one, uh, the VIG bags are limited to 100 people. 
and uh, they pay a little extra for it, but it's completely worth it. Uh, everybody got two Conquest um, mo- model boxes, troop boxes or whatever, uh, and all the other swag that we gave away too. Um, so it, it was quite a bit. Um, so at 9 o'clock, the vendor room was supposed to open, but uh, Privateer Press's credit card machine was messing up so we had to get that fixed so it was about 10 o'clock pretty much really when everything could go um and then after that um we had to go up and get the streaming table uh for people don't know we streamed (laughs) all the streaming tables uh streamed all the games uh this weekend on our channel uh we'll probably do that for uh we'll probably do it again next year just because it's easy to do it uh, and all the donations that we got during then we're giving to our uh, charity, which is a foster care program in St. Louis. Um, but it was kind of funny because I had Mizzy on one side and Erica on the other testing out audio going, do you hear me? Do you hear me? Speak, speak, speak. <laughs> get, you know, just to try to get all the audio streams correctly and the video streams. Well, oh. stuff. <laughs> it worked out good. It, it, it actually it turned out really well. A little bit of it, yeah. Uh, Lady B, the VIG bags are uh, not only the vendor hall. So our VIG bags, you get you get to the vendor hall Thursday nights. You get early access to get your badge. Um, you get a free T-shirt. You get a VIG T-shirt and a VIG set of dice. Uh, and then you get all the swag. Um, and there was something there from Creature Caster, something there from Privateer Press, uh, something from Heavy Gear, there was something for from every sponsor in that bag, um, nice. and it like literally, uh, I think Nestor did a uh, Mizzy. You may want to post that video. Uh, go to Nestor Nessie knows at YouTube. He did a oh, yeah. uh, reveal of the swag bag, um, and it was quite a bit of stuff. Uh, I was really proud of how I did on that one. Sorry, I'm gonna brag because it was a lot of work. Um, so we went to bed at like two 30 in the morning after we got everything set up Two thirty, Yeah. And then Best time to go to bed, woke up at seven, did it all weekend. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Woke up at yeah, seven. That's why you're tired. <laughs> and like, I had to sign some contracts for the hotel to make sure it was all done. Um, and then our vendors we had this year, by the way, was mini masterworks. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, Heavy Gear from a friend of mine. Privateer Press, a local game store called Game Night. Uh, Muse on Minis was there. Uh, Yale Lasersmith, which did all of our trophies. Um, Iron Oak Casting, which was a casting studio that's local. Uh, Metal Oak. Oh, Metal Oak. And then, <clears throat> and then we were supposed to have Creature Caster, but they didn't show. They're Canadian. We understood. And one of our vendors, their van broke down along the way, so they weren't able to show. Um, oh, bummer. So. There we go. Swag bag. Yeah. There's Nestor's swag bag. He posted about it. Um, then, what was it? Um, next morning, got started at 8 o'clock. Started running everything, letting things go. And it was just nonstop till 10 or 11 o'clock. Um, I am going to, so before everything started, I told everybody, do not overexert yourself. You have not been to a convention in a year and a half to two years. Do not overexert yourself. We had two people that hurt their backs. One had to be taken to the hospital. Oh shit. Yeah. Um, both while playing scrambles, waiting for the invitational. Yeah. Both waiting for the invitational. Both of them hurt their backs from bending over. One actually had to go to the hospital uh, for pain meds and everything because he hurt his back. And I was like, guys, you got to take it easy. Um, This is, you know, this is what happens when you were all out of shape to play miniature games. Um, Of course, Werewolf was prime at the convention. There was Werewolf game from like... Nine ten o'clock till about 2 o'clock in the morning, which is a staple of Warfare Weekend. And it's usually a big-sized werewolf game, like 30, 20 to 30 people, give or take. 
we were hanging out and w- walked up on it and I was like, holy shit, this is a lot of people playing werewolf. Yeah. It, it is a tradition. Um, what else? Everything went really smoothly. <laughs> right, Mo? <laughs> round is absolutely a shape. Yeah, round is a shape. Um, pretty much everything went pretty smoothly except for the one um, credit card machine thing, but they sent someone out to fix it. And so once it was fixed, it was good. Um, the streaming went okay. We had some audio issues here and there, but it was more about tweaking it than anything else and people forgetting to unmute their mics. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Type thing. But uh, it went really well. It, it, I was really sore. My ankles didn't stop swelling for like three days after the event because it was just so much walking. Um, yeah. We did yeah. get very big props. One of the uh, uh, Adepticon uh, attendee type uh, event organizers was there, and he was like, y'all did really good. I'm like, I tried. Tried my hardest. Tell them about what happened with this. Oh, so um, for the Invitational, they get a challenge coin. Um, certain people get extra ones. And it's just a little challenge coin that says feet on it for War Machine players and Hordes players. There's a feet. Um, And I got the one with a bottle opener because I was like, hey, that sounds cool. So they're stealing our idea. (laughs) I'm like, okay, you can steal that idea. (laughs) Which is really cool because it's it's, it's actually just kind of fun. Um, Made a lot of new friends. Um, it was a very skilled out event. We had, um, I think at max of 1.300 people. Um, uh, but that's because of, you know, our COVID policies and such. And we just made it like it was, uh, but it went really, really well. A lot of people had a lot of fun. Uh, I had a lot of people says, I'm really not going to play any games this year. I'm just going to hang out and, um, drink. And I'm like, go right ahead. <laughs> Type thing. So. Uh, I did want to show some of the stuff that Miniature Masterworks gave me. Um, they says this yeah. is for you, and I want to show it is. But uh, let's go ahead and start. V, I'm going to put us on paint cam so I can kind of show this yeah. up. And while we're while I'm getting everything ready, uh, tell us who you are and what you do. I'm Bleeder Dragon. Most people around me call me V. Uh, I don't even remember where it started. It just I think Bleeder Dragon got a bit much for people, so yeah. we went. With- be uh currently my kind of day job is twitch streaming and writing and i do have i have an etsy store where i sell sell all the knitted crap that i end up making uh over on my stream we play i think you've raided into my stream on sunday nights when we play iron sworn yes yes there's no iron sworn tonight i'm here (laughs) what do you mean you can't be in two places at once oh my god Um, but I play with my friend Liam who DMs over on the Pyro Club and we have a grand old time playing that. So I wanted to show this off real quick before we get started on the main yes. thing. Um so Miniature Masterworks, they sell glass beads. Yay! So if you're for your paint shakers. Um this Ooh. is something I haven't tried out yet. And it is they're pencils that you draw on your models for like rust, dirt, and damage. What? Yeah. I haven't tested them yet, so I'm going to be... Sorcery. Yeah, but they're I like colored pencils. Game. I haven't tested them, so I'm going to test them out. I got a couple of models that I want to test them on um, that are probably going to be whatever, but they're colored pencils that you use to draw on your models to give like the rust or like like this green was probably patina for brass and dirt and everything. But the one thing that I was super 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 excited to get because i've been wanting to get one for a long time and since he was there didn't have to pay shipping was oops the vortex <gasps> you got a vortex yes are you gonna put googly eyes on it uh someone said it's, uh, i think it's like a tradition to put googly eyes on it so people don't know you this is a vortex eyes. it is a paint shaker um and pretty much what it is is you push down the bottom and it starts it and you just put your paint on here and it'll shake up your paints without having to worry about it. I mean, you can see the movement out of it already. Yeah. But <laughs> I've been dying to have one of these for a long time. <laughs> I know everybody's like, is that a vibrator you're using, Gonzo? And I'm like, yes. Yes. 
We gotta keep it in toss, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean... Psh, toss. <laughs> I don't get to see. <laughs> but, I really... I've been dying to get one of these because they're really, really good. Um, and... Menu Masterworks has them, and they're on sale. And so I've been dying to have one of those. And so That's that was awesome. one of the products I wanted. So I'm going to work on some models. Um, I picked up, they had a really good sale for Warcaster there. And so I picked up an Imperium set so I can do demos because I have ISA, and these Imperium models are just fucking badass looking. I mean, Protoss looking. Game. They're just... Badass. Really cool. So I was going to work on one of those while we were talking about stuff. Yeah. If that's okay with you, V. I think you should. Okay. This is, this is after all, we're talking about TTRPGs and streaming and that kind of stuff. And so that's a good thing to start with. Yeah. So, all right. So how did you get started streaming, by the way? Did you just get bored and like, I'll do it. So in 2018, I walked away from my job. I just had... I was burned out. I got severely burned out and I switched teams to try and combat some of that. And 14 months after that switch, I was like, nope, I'm out. Uh, <laughs> so I kind of <laughs> planned that I was going to work on writing and focus on doing my books and, you know, alternate ways of making money. It's very fortunate that I have a supportive partner who is allowing me to do some of this. And I kind of got... Are they, are they really allowing you or are they just accepting? A little bit of both. Okay. Uh, so I kind of, and, and speaking of Slade can talk, can, his nose about the, uh, the Slade was one of the, one of the people who was really very supportive of me while I was kind of going through a whole lot of, a lot of shit at my job. And he had, he had started playing, um, Subnautica streaming it on YouTube. And I sat in his stream and bogged him and I kind of started watching a whole lot of YouTube videos that led me to Twitch channels. And then I was just like, you know what? What if I just did that? <laughs> Slade, we will blame you for whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of, it kind of started from there. And then it was like, and I started out just like, I'm going to stream when I feel like it. I'm going to just turn, run. If I, I'm not going to put a schedule to it. I'm just going to stream when I feel like it. And as I started kind of, getting more used to what it meant and what, what that was for me and what my streams were going to be, I started putting a schedule to it and kind of helping, giving me the, like, if this is going to be something that I'm going to do and I'm going to say that I that's part of what I do, I might as well just put a schedule to it and just stop pretending like I'm, you know, just doing this for whatever. It's I'm Let's, let's be more serious about it. I hate schedules. <laughs> It's so it's so frustrating. It's like no, no. But that's part of too why like the the whole taking a break. Taking a break is so important that in anything you do. And um I have a friend who coined the term take the fucking sick day. Oh, and yeah. we we abbreviate it as TTFSD because so many people will continue to work past the point where they should have taken a break like six months ago. <laughs> oh yeah. Because we, in at least in the U S we, the, the idea is if you're not always busy and always working, you're not doing your job. I worked on a team before I quit where people would start work at 9am in the morning and work their job and then come in and, and come in and talk about how they'd stayed up working until 2am. Ew. And complain about how they didn't have time with their families, they didn't have time with their kids, that all they were doing was working. I was like, uh, my eight hours is out. My eight hours is up, I'm out. Oh, yeah. Like, the, 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 there's none of that. If I work extra beyond that, that's my choice. That's my gift to the company. Me. Especially if you're salary. Because I'm salary. They don't pay me for, you don't pay you for those extra hours and you're burning yourself out. And... Streaming is kind of the same way. If you hit a point in your... I never want to hit a point where I have to go on stream and I'm just not feeling it. So I try and catch that before I hit that so that I don't burn out on it. So that when I get to stream, I'm there for stream. I'm there. I'm talking to the chat. I'm 
interesting on stream instead of just being kind of grumpy and fussy. Though sometimes grumpy and fussy can be fun. But it's still about making sure that you're taking care of yourself. And those breaks are so important to think about, okay, what do I want to do? If you get to a point where you're like, I'm, I got a stream today, what am I going to do? And you can't decide. I joke that I will decide what I'm going to do for stream. It's, I know, Slate. I, I, I joke that I'll decide what I'm going to do for stream that morning. Like, tomorrow morning I'm streaming. What am I going to do for stream? I don't know yet. I'll decide when I get up. But I do generally decide before that. Because it's nice to have that kind of plan of, okay, I have the whole desk set up. I have the desk set up to do something on the desk. I have a game picked out. I'm going to play this game. I'm going to be upstairs at the piano. So I've moved all the stuff upstairs that I need to move upstairs for the piano. And so it's... There's, there's thinking that happens about it outside of stream as well as the, the whole idea of to get people to come to your stream, you have to go to theirs. Streaming is social networking. And I've, I've had arguments with people about this. Twitch is a social network. Oh, 100% uh, most, at, at, at smaller streamers, most people in your chat are also going to be streamers. And everybody's kind of fighting to get people into their stream. Yep. And you can spend a whole lot of time going, well, I don't want to go live because this person's gone live. And I don't want to go live because that person's gone live. And you can find yourself with no time in the day to go live. Because everybody else you want to watch is going live. If you want to go live, don't. you're always going to be competing against someone else. Yeah. You do you, boo-boo. And pick your time and go live at your time. And if there's specific people i have a small group of people that unless we're streaming together i don't go live when they're live because i that's my small kind of my core group of people that if they're streaming i want to be in their stream and able to focus on their stream and giving them shit in their chat or whatever yeah and that but there's you still have to leave time for yourself too to go new places and that can be stressful too because that networking of with new people that's a very extroverted thing to have to do, even if there's a computers in between you. Yes, absolutely. It can be really scary to go into a new chat where these people are talking and they know each other and you watch them. And some bigger streamers don't do a good job of new people come in and start talking in chat. Does anybody acknowledge them? Does anybody see them? Do they become or are they just they say, hi, I really like your stream and they don't even get acknowledged. And that. That that's that's the other part of I want to be able to when someone comes into my stream if I'm burned out I'm going to struggle to genuinely acknowledge their presence so that break helps me come back and be like hey hey new person welcome on in <laughs> prove you're not a bot <laughs> oh yeah that's another big thing proving you're not a bot yeah the 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 bot thing it was it's good to take a break and not have to deal with that I was doing a lot of. I had a list of like my stream and five other people that I mod for, and I was like running through <laughs> everyone that I found, banned, banned them across the board. Like you get banned in everybody's channel. <laughs> oh yeah. So it's it's you know, streaming has been really fun, and it's been a good way for me to kind of some of the the knitting projects have come from people I've met on Twitch, and a lot of the. The other stuff is like, and so the ideas for things I want to do come from come from the chat. The chat's like, hey, you want to do this? You should do this. This is a good idea. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll make that. Hmm, missing a weapon. Oh, no, a missing weapon. Well, it's it's not on the... Okay, so I'm building the Warjack, which is this model right here. I wanted to put this sword on him, but I guess the sword is not on this model. It's probably in the alternate weapons pack Ooh, probably. probably it's most likely the alternate weapons pack which i haven't dug into but i bought two war jacks so one will have that and this one so uh just for everybody's shiggles i you have to i'm not magnetizing this jack i have no need to magnetize this jack um so i'm just going to put it on there the way it is and just go with it um and this one's going to be kind of like my generic jack where it's going to have, it, it's going to have stealth, but it's going to be more a melee close fighter type thing. Type, type so a horror. stealthy barbarian is what I hear. Yes. <laughs> and he has the hound head and I don't have a hound head. So we will just, oh yeah, I do. 
No, I do not have a hound head. Because that's a guardian and that's a wrath. So I bet you it's in the alternate pack. So let me check so we got that. The heads. Yeah, dig out more stuff. Oh, I bought like everything for them and just enough to give it a little extra type thing. So I just got to find the alternate weapons. Just no big deal. So, okay, so RPG. We always try okay. to raid you now that, you know, Pyro Club's not doing their thing, the Harlan's Heroes. And so yeah, Harlan's we were... Heroes was, is, is currently over. We yeah. may go back to it. Um, spoilers, I'm not going to spoil you anything. Harlan's Heroes was a lot of fun. Uh, we got to play kind of modern era characters and be be mostly ourselves. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> mostly. Slade asked me once why, you know, what I what I liked about the V character and the spooky character and like why I like to play them. Like I like to play characters, especially on stream that are, would make similar decisions to my own. So I don't have to think about it. That's fair. I just make yeah. the decision. So like I tend to, so my, I mean, my husband kind of jokes that all my stream characters are the same. All the, all the characters I play when I play on streamed games are the same character, just skinned a little bit differently. And he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> because there's so many other things to think about when you're on camera there is in my hair looking okay am i looking dumb on the camera am i making a funny face am i forcing my facial expressions what are good people gonna see when they look at me so it's easier to just kind of play that that one character that i know how to play i can be that character i can make those decisions without having to worry about it so then off stream i end up playing like uh, we're playing Worlds Without Number on Wednesday nights, and I play it. My character is much less charismatic, is the kind of the way to put it. She She's much quieter. She kind of approaches situations from the, I'm going to observe this situation and react to it after I see what everybody else is going to do. <laughs> so a reactor. Which doesn't, yeah, it doesn't always play very well on a streamed game, but... Is kind of, is, can, can be fun to play as the not the leader of the party. Someone else can be the leader, and I'm just going to hang out here and pet my horse. <laughs> I found the sword. Yay! So we're going to put the sword on this one. This is going to be my, my, my melee one. So what are the challenges? I mean, we do... We, we don't stream, but we do record our uh, RPG session. What are the challenges that you're finding on doing a RPG stream? So some of it is like RPGs on stream can be really hard to make interactive. And I've, I've watched Pyro Clubs since a long time. Slade was like, <laughs> hey, we're, my, 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 my friends and I are going to do this stream <laughs> A D and D game. You should come watch. I was like, "Oh, good, another way to make fun of Slade." Got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Goals. But a lot of it is about you. You sometimes you go into other other D and D streams, other RPG streams, and you sit there and you, you kind of say something in chat, and they don't talk to you. They're just busy playing their game. And mm -hmm. so if you if you have, there are people who like that. There are people who like. I just want to watch this game. Correct. Right. I don't I don't want I just want I don't want to talk and chat. I just want to lurk. I just want to watch the game. But sometimes it's really fun to have that interactivity. So with Iron Torn, I've been trying to chat if you have ideas. But when you don't have a whole lot of people in chat, sometimes there's not that ability. So you kind of have to you get a lot of dead space if you're if you're trying to include chat and you just don't have anyone saying anything. And that Correct. can be really frustrating from both a broadcaster perspective and a viewer perspective. It's like, nobody's saying anything. You should just keep going. Yeah. Just keep, keep playing going. the game. Just keep playing. But it also can be... And sometimes games are just boring. Right? Sometimes it's just boring. Well, sometimes the because games, there's for nothing for people reason, to react to. And it's it's not boring to the players necessarily because they've played either they've played these characters so much they they know what's going on and they're enjoying it, but for a viewer it's like I don't I'm bored and it can be really hard to to have people coming in fresh 
to a game that's been running for X number of years or X number of months. Like even Iron Swarm, we're getting to a point where if you haven't watched, you can miss out on things. Yeah. You there's there's things that we can reference back to, like Richard's actual name, which we never say. We just call him Richard, and then we you know we laugh about it because his actual name is Dick Biter. <laughs> but if you weren't there for that, it's maybe you don't maybe you maybe miss out on the joke. And so it's being able to bring people in when they're new to the stream or when they're coming in partway through to say, go to the Discord. We've written out journals of what's happened. Uh, I post the videos on YouTube so you can go back and rewatch. But they're three hour videos. Correct. I don't expect someone to watch through three hours of Liam and I, you know, trying to kill our characters. Yeah. And that, and that's, you know, you, you think about it. That's, I think, that's where a lot of kind of RPG streams tend to fall flat. Is that you do your recap at the beginning, and then you go into the game, and someone misses that first fifteen minutes. Someone was in an ad break. Someone, you know, didn't get home until you know a little while after you. Someone was doing something else. It can be very hard to come into that stream and know what the hell is going on. And then you start referencing things that happened before and before and before, and you start to loot. People start to kind of go, I'm lost. What is all this? I, I don't feel like I belong here. And so you kind of start to loot. You, you have this, this, this core group of people who've been there from the beginning. And then you, you have to, you have to figure out how to allow new people into your, into your game, into the table so that they feel like it is something for them. Yeah, it, it, they they belong there, even if they didn't see, you know, the thing that happened last week. It's still it doesn't they don't lose anything out of the game. And that and that I think that is that's a struggle for any anybody who's broadcasting an RPG is well, that is that knowing how to how to make make it so that new viewers feel welcomed and like they belong in the in that situation rather than you know these are just some people that are talking on the screen playing this game with these characters that i don't know anything about going back uh towards that in a little bit of perspective people are like oh you gotta watch critical role you'll really like it gonzo because they do a lot of good role playing and all this other stuff and i'm like cool uh what do i need to do well you have to watch um 700 hours first so you uh -huh. can get caught up on the story i'm like no thank you uh-uh I'm well, not. I'm not other... gonna. I'm not gonna watch seven uh, seven hundred <laughs> no. hours. Which they're good. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with yeah. Critical Role. I'm not. I'm not dogging it. But I'm not gonna watch seven hundred hours. And I tried watching it, but there's something when I'm a GM and I've spent seven hours streaming through the week. I kind of don't want to sit and watch someone streaming. I have other things I want to do. Depending yeah. on the situation, for the most part. But yes. Well. And I have not watched Critical Role, but what what they what they are putting together, what Critical Role is doing, is a TV show. Oh yeah, hundred percent it is. It's a TV show. They have a production crew. They have a marketing department. Even if it's oh, just yeah. one person, they have marketing people. They and and that's that that's fine, and that's that's good for a lot of people. And I and I applaud them for doing that in that way. And I think like each season is a different storyline, so you don't. If you started this season, you don't have to watch all of the previous seasons again don't quote me on that don't watch have other shit to do yeah. <laughs> i mod in like 20 channels on twitch so i have a lot of shit to do uh, <laughs> and and it, i think there's a lot of like D, D streams that started because they wanted to be the next critical role and i'm sorry i don't want to be the one to burst your bubble but you're not going to be. No, what people don't understand is while Critical Role is a very good success, and by the way, G4 TV is coming back, and they have their own D&D &D stream that they're going to be doing also, which means that they're going to try to emulate what Critical Role. What people don't understand, because I actually had someone going, man, why don't you do voices and all this other cool stuff like Critical Role? I go, one, he's an actor. Two, yep. they get paid to do this, guys. Yup. <laughs> and they, they get paid, you know... This isn't, you know, Critical Role is the highest paid Twitch channel payout of all time. If you didn't know that when they had the leak of everybody getting paid, Critical Role yeah. had the most money coming in from viewers. And huh. everybody at that table is getting paid. Yes. This is 
this is a a job. That's very important. And they're all actors. Correct. They're all professional actors trained. There's, you know, you you look for some of those voice actors, and they're in stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. They're they're all. Yeah. They've all done things. So I mean, this isn't this isn't. Yeah. This isn't me and my friends playing. This is paid actors that get paid a gig to play D and D, which would be a sweet ass gig. Don't get me wrong. Sweet ass gig. I would do that. I yeah. would play whatever character you want me to fucking play, and I would play that character. Yeah. But, but a lot of people forget that because they're like, oh, my God, this is really good. And then they're like, Critical Role went off, and now they're making tons of money. And I'm like, now they've got bigger production values. They're in their own studio. They've mm-hmm. got, you know, people doing things for them. That's what people – some people forget and that's that. A, and that's a game – that was designed to be streamed. Yes. That was designed to be those that group of people performing that, performing it basically. Yes. It's a performance. They're, I'm not. We're not going to put. <laughs> we're not going to sugarcoat it. It's a performance for them. Yes. They walk in and it's a performance. You know, I walk into. Iron's Horn kind of is a performance. It gets a little performative because it is streamed. But my my thirsty sword lesbians party is not. That's just me and Kathy and some friends and Grant and some friends. And we play that game and we just have a good time and we're terrible. Yeah. Right? I don't have to worry about toss. I can give characters names after real people that I don't have to hide. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you're you're just sitting there having fun. <laughs> yeah. And just letting things If it were going lie. to be a streamed game, that's a different approach. Because A, if I'm streaming Thirsty Sword Lesbians on Twitch... I have to know that people are going to come in and be shitty in the chat. Oh, yeah. Just because of what it's called. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, you know, they, they what, did oh, wait, start wait, wait. as, as a saying. bunch of friends playing, but they were a bunch of actor friends playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so oh, I yeah. think I think it's a, it's a very much... Uh, if you want to stream your D and D, your table D and D game, I'm not saying you shouldn't. I just think there's a lot of things to consider as part of that. There's there's the whole you know, you know we talk about we talk about Richard and we talk about what Richard's actual name is. That's a that's an inside joke. That is Liam, me, Tell, who gave us the name. <laughs> And and the people who were there in chat to understand why that was funny, and as you build those more those inside jokes, we love inside jokes. People love having those like inside jokes with my friends, right? Yeah. That one thing that you say to your best friend that makes you both just crack up laughing that nobody else gets. We love those, but those aren't always good for a stream. Those set you up with this stuff. Oh, you know, there, there's the, this happened. This is really funny to us. The rest of the people on the stream are kind of like, okay. People watching are like, okay. I, uh, okay. Yep. So you have to balance that bringing people into your table, bringing them into the story to understand what's going on and making sure that the people at the table also feel like it's their, their part of the story. And if you get, if you get, if you balance too much either way, somebody's not happy. Well, I mean, okay, so we have uh, Mizzy's part of our uh, Gangs of Waterdeep, and we really haven't streamed it because we're pretty much the story's almost done of the Gangs of Waterdeep. Now we've got to go through uh, what's going to happen, which is they're going to be exploring Ruins of Undermountain. And that's kind of when I want to start to stream it because it'll be these characters are established, but we're going to have new characters because we're doing character trees and all this other stuff. And it's, it's going to be, you know, something different. But there are a ton of inside jokes now. Uh, mm-hmm. a, a ton of inside <laughs> jokes that mm-hmm. people won't get. And, it, and we got that. But that's something that they'll have to do. So we're – and really, I tell my players not to watch the stream. Uh, Mizzy moder- can, will, you know, moderate it. But – I don't want them to feel spoiled. I also don't want to put that pressure on them that they've got to watch the stream so they can comment. I can comment if need yeah. be. Um, but there's going to be inside jokes and people are just going to go, what the hell? And I'm like, yeah, you're just going to have to you know, get with it. Yeah. And you can, you can either let it go 
you know, let the table laugh and let it go. Or you can stop and explain it to the whole chat, which you don't want to have to do every time. And sometimes you just want to keep going because it kind of was a derail moment. But you have steps you need to make in the story yeah. rather than derailing all the time. So it's it's finding that balance of what's the right thing to do here for the people that are in my in my chat and for what's happening on the table. And yeah. like I've 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 been I've been in the I'm street I'm playing in the streamed game, but I'm also trying to moderate the chat, and I don't want to see what's going on on the screen. So it's like I put stuff over the screen, <laughs> like this goes over the screen, so all I see is the chat. Yeah, because I mean, <laughs> what people understand there is a lot of things that you have to have up for your players too. You know, you've yep. got to have all the equipment, all the stuff ready for them whenever you know you're ready to go, and the mats. You know, some people use, you know, roll 20. Some people don't use roll 20. And, you know, you've got to have all that stuff ready. We don't use roll 20. We we tried it, but we were like, eh, forget it. Let's just not do it. Ours is more of the mind eye theaters. We do show the dice yeah. rolls so people can see when, you know, when we're like, oh, shit. You know, when someone rolls a one or someone rolls a 20, we have that so people can see it. But, you know, having mats up and having making sure that the mats are there and solid so people mm -hmm. can see is a whole different ball of wax that people don't. That's understand. a lot of work setting up oh, yeah. setting up the whole the whole I so for my D and D table we ran Sunless Citadel and the Dwarven Forge out of Tales from the Yawning Portal, mm -hmm. and that was a lot of times that I spent like going and putting the maps in and in, importing them into Roll Twenty because I pay, we paid for them in D and D Beyond. I'm not also paying for them in Roll Twenty. Correct. Heck that noise. Yeah, no. <laughs> Heck that noise. If I was going to stream it, I probably would have paid for them in, in Roll20. But I was not going to stream it. We were just going to play and have fun and be, you know, be weirdos. As you do. Also, because I was like, I haven't, D I haven't DM'd D&D &D before, so we're just going to not stream it because... I don't want people to see me make all these mistakes because I'm going to make a ton of mistakes. <laughs> and there's some people who want to play but don't want to be on stream. Correct. We always ask, yeah. like every D&D &D game I've played, I was like, do you mind if we record so we can I can post about it? Most people are like, yeah, I don't mind if you record it. And I go, do you mind if we stream it? And some people are like, I don't want to stream. I'm like, okay, no big deal. Yeah. And it, it has to be okay. You know, the other thing is there, you know, if you have, if you have no, no cameras on your screen for your players and just the names, it's really, really hard to know who's who. Yeah. Because voices get compressed through the internet and through the microphones that we use. So your voice, the people, people are going to start to sound the same. And even if they're doing, and sometimes people do voices and it's the same voice. And then if you're not seeing who's actually talking, it can be really hard to differentiate Goblin A and Goblin B. Yes. <laughs> right? So, and sometimes I w you want to try something with a character and you just don't want people to, you don't want a whole bunch of people to see you try a different voice for a character or something different with a character. You just don't want to. But I also, like, going back to the cameras thing, it gets really hard to, and, and the maps thing too. I, I struggle sometimes with Ironsworn because we don't have battle maps. Everything is kind of in the mind when we're doing these fights. We don't have character tokens. What you see on the screen is the big map of the world, my character sheet, and the when I go and I select where I go and select things to make things happen. It's just that, and that can be really interesting to some people and it can be really off-putting to other people so it's finding again it's all about balance you you have to find what works for you as both a player as a dm and what works for your table whether it's streamed or not i don't know i really like iron sworn it's a lot of fun what is iron sworn for people that don't so, know iron sworn is an rpg uh it was a kickstarter i believe hi kathy uh it is kathy! The, kathy! Base, the base game pdf is free at ironsworn.com there's actually a link in my chat if you type in what is it it's just set up to give you <laughs> i might not because i have no it might because i have that um 
it's set up so that you are you can play it with a stand like a standard TTRPG where you have one person as the keeper who kind of runs the story and does all the work, or you can run it in a co-op mode where you play with a friend or two and you just roll all of your decisions based on random tables. Who doesn't love random tables? <laughs> random tables are the best. Uh, and that's what Liam and I are doing, but you can also play it by yourself and do the same thing where you're playing the character and then you just roll all of your everything based on random tables and you can run yourself through an adventure and make the decisions and tell the story that way. It's It's a lot of fun. <laughs> and the characters get get our characters are still they don't feel as powerful as they are in certain circumstances like if you take my character scar and we go into a combat i ride the mammoth into combat i'm pretty pretty much gonna kick everything's butt unless i met you know unless i miss but then there's still a chance i miss but we fought a a troll and I had a talisman from Liam's character Scar against the troll. Plus I was riding the mammoth. So I couldn't miss. So I just, like, the combat was hit the troll, hit the troll. <laughs> Liam, you want to do anything? Hit the troll. <laughs> so they're very, it's very, and we, we did that on purpose too, is like we have characters that complement each other so that we're not both playing the same kind of archetype. It's really fun. It's 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 an interesting world that comes pretty well developed with the world and but you get to start with making all your world decisions. Again, random tables. Here's your options. What does your world look like? And it's free. You can pay extra to get the delve add-on. You can pay a little bit and get the delve add-on, which is worth which is worth it, which is how we've been trying to kill ourselves lately. <laughs> You you probably don't want to. You should pay for the Delve add-on because it's good, but you are gonna probably kill your character. And it's definitely a fun way. It's kind of it's a fun break because neither of us has to be the keeper. And personally, I like keeper instead of dungeon master or game master or whatever because it, keeper is gender neutral. That's why I say keeper a lot. Every once in a while, the DM or the, the GM slips in, but keeper's really nice because it's gender neutral. Yeah. I am almost done with this model. I'm not going to be able to get it all done while we're doing this because we're about to go to uh, media section. Cause what time is it? About 8 o'clock? Uh, About 8 o'clock. Yeah, basically. So I wanted to show this off, this model, because I really, really like the, the aesthetics of this faction. They remind me of the Protoss from um, StarCraft. Uh, and they are an artificial intelligent race. They don't have, like, people running things. It's all, like, robots and stuff. So it's actually really, really cool. But I wanted to talk about it. And this thing's going to fall over because it's back heavy. Um, so in this game, you have your model, your basic stats. The heads on the model uh, do something different. Uh, so like this hound, the hound gives him stealth. That's what I put on him is the hound head. Uh, it gives him pathfinder and um, it gives him stealth. You can do other things. But it has different things that go through it. And the one thing I like about this game is you have a right arm, left arm, and a back. And they have weapon points you can have five weapon points and each weapon costs a certain amount of points the shield projector costs two and then the protean forge costs two and the hard arm point costs two so this is actually won't work i'm at six points i'm way too high so i got to figure out something different so i got to break this arm off i didn't know that was that toy oh, dang it so, so, so this is when you were, so, when you were saying you were mag you magnetize it. It's so that you can take the parts off and put on different parts. Yeah, and I'm not going to magnetize. So I'll probably have to take off and put this arm on something else, or put a new back on. So I can go back over here and I can go. Ooh, what was the back piece that I need to put on here? That's not it. So I'm already over my point allowance, which I didn't even pay attention because I was like, ooh, here's the sword. <laughs> So I'm probably going to change the back piece because the arm pieces are probably going to be two a piece no matter what. And so I need to find something that's one piece, which is going to stink. One piece. One point. So let's look. 
Anything that costs one. Well, this weapon costs one. This back costs two. This arm costs one. This back piece costs three. Whew. Uh, there's an arm that costs one. And an arm that costs one. And a back that costs three. So I'm going to have to find... I want the two melee weapons. So I'm going to have to find a back piece that costs one. Which there isn't a back piece that costs one. So I'm going to change one of these weapons out for a one weapon cost because I want this weapon. So I'm going to take this weapon and change it out for a one cost weapon, which kind of stinks. But I'll have to figure out like this weapon don't care about because I wanted this one to be like a, a melee type weapon. So I'm going to have to figure out something. I'll have to figure it later. So I'm already over my point allowance on this model. So Four. I like I said, I bought another jack, so it's okay. So I can do this. But I really like this because this model looks really cool. Like it has two of these things on there. These little wing projectors. So I mean, it's pretty sweet. Uh this army is going to be jet black. And inside the grooves, I think I'm gonna do like a yellow green. So it kind of like a Tron type look to them. Ooh. Type thing is what I'm looking for. So I might figure that out. So let's go over here and go to. Da, 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 da. Let's go to media section. I'm sure that since we've been away for like two weeks, y'all have like 17 things that y'all want to talk about, right? Yay! Uh, the back of my eyelids, sure. The back of your eyelids. Uh, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I just watched that yesterday. I, I got that one, so we can talk about that. Let's switch over. Uh, fix my camera a little bit. Boom, 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 and everything. So, um, I think I have like five or six things. I did not watch a lot. I did a lot of um, resting. Does reading books count as, as media? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, we yeah. did this because yeah. I've read a lot of books. Yeah, well. you can talk about any type of thing that you did that's kind of thing. I have one, two, three, four, five, six things to talk about. And most of them are completed. So, Mizzy, what do you got? 17? Oh, you know what? Nobody has paid for my ears. Yes! Nobody has paid for ears. I can see where it's coming now. Because <laughs> we only have 30 minutes left of the podcast. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say. But you know what you I did, have right? mentioned it. <laughs> well, you know what I did, though, right? Made you pay for this instead of paying for Sylvie's crown. That's okay. I still have uh, 60,000 channel points. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Okay. So, so Sylvie's crown is, is two days left. It just doesn't seem like it's worth putting the points into it at this point. We can start it over, get our points back, and then we can make him do it. Yeah. So Sylvie's crown, or say Loki's crown, cat ears, and eyeliner? Yeah, that's going to be... Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yes. <laughs> so I have to, I'll have to set up. I, so I did eyeliner just for the heck of it, just to see what it looked like. Uh, I had someone else do it for me, of course, because I suck it. Um, just to see how it would look. And uh, I'm okay with it. It's whatever. It looks outstanding. Does it look good? My style? It does. Yes. Yes. A little smoky eyeliner. I'm probably not going to put it on my 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 top of my lid next time because I can tell my eyes are just watering from it. So I'll have to go clean that off. But so, Mizzy, how many do you have? I don't think I have anything. I slept a lot. <laughs> you could talk about your swag that you got from Warfare Weekend. We'll let you do that. Uh. But you have to wait. Okay. <laughs> did I get anyway? I, I probably stuff. have I probably have three things from okay. the last two weeks. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and go with what, what I did. So um, I did a lot of filling out applications uh, online, and a lot of that is just copy and pasting and just typing in. So I did that in front of the TV a few times. So I watched um, – it's on Apple TV. It's called Mythic Quest. Mythic Quest is a story of people that design a massive multiplayer – RPG and what happens inside the office. Everything is so super, 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 super 
stereotyped, like beyond belief stereotyped. Uh, and it's meant to be like that because like, uh, okay, the girl programmer is, you know, super neurotic and, you know, it just, it's, it's all way over the top. Um, season one was really good. It was, it had good comedy. It incorporated all the RPGs and, you know, like talk about Twitch streaming and you look at it and you watch it and you're like, yeah, that, that happens. Yep. That happens. Yep. This Twitch streamer bombed your game. So your game's going to tank and you're going to lose money on it because this one Twitch streamer, you know, doesn't like it anymore. And, and, and some of it is based off of real life stuff that have happened. And you can tell, uh, because you're like, oh, I remember that happened in WoW. Oh yeah. I remember they didn't do that at all. That was just like bullshit and it didn't happen. Um, the characters are over the top. The characters are beyond belief kind of, you know, they're very stereotypical. Is the show good? It's not bad. Um, it's not bad at all. If you're into like video games and you're into the behind the scenes of video games and also things that happen in video games, you can see what happens in this. You know when it happens in real life, especially the Twitch streaming parts and the um, behind the scenes happen with an MMORPG and all the technical difficulties and so on and so forth. Um, I give this, which I think is funny because on the Twitch streamer, the Twitch streamer they have is like this 14-year-old kid that has like, you know, 80 million followers and he gives it a rating of buttholes. And uh, I was like, okay, the higher the buttholes, the better, which I thought was funny because we do the opposite, but ours are space herpes. And I was like, yeah, they're right. This is what happens. <laughs> but um, exactly what happens. It's exactly what happened. So I give I give it two space herpes. Um, it's not bad because it, 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 it would have been a one except for season two played less on what happens in video games and more about office drama. And I was like, uh, it dropped, you know, it probably would have been a one if it wasn't second season wasn't all about the office drama, the things that happens outside of it. I mean, I want the show to be about the MMO RPG and all the bullshit and the, you know, that stuff. And it kind of went away from that and started going about things that happened outside of the office and outside of the RPG. And I was like, uh, let's get back to it. Cause there were a couple episodes. I'm like, fast forward. Don't care. Yep. Let's go to this episode. Cause it was about the game. Cause I went, I went to see about the game and all the stupid stuff. Like they start, they introduce a shovel to the game. No one's ever had any digging in the game before and they introduced a shovel and they coded it. So you could not shovel and create a penis in the ground. And they were like, yes, we don't want your little kids creating a penis on the ground. And so the reviewer was like, see, I don't like this. I can't draw my own penises. I need to draw Thanks my own for penises. taking away my fun. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> I and need it, to be the 12 year old boy. Damn it. Give yeah. me my penises. <laughs> yeah. But, but that's, but that's what people, you know, it's, it's actually relevant to the game and relevant to what's happening and stuff. And there was like, this weapon doesn't do a lot of damage. Oh, well, it's not a weapon. It's a shovel. But they take and make it a weapon and let people draw penises with it or dig penises with it because that caters to the crowd and gives them better ratings, more money, et cetera, et cetera. So that's where it kind of goes with. Um, like it says, two space herpes. Mm, that's about all I can do. Uh, it did get renewed for a third season, so I'll see. If it, if it gets back into the story of the games, I'm okay with it. V, what'd you hit me with first? Uh, let's talk about Shang Chi. Oh, you want to do you want to do that one already? Yeah, we should we should do that one. Okay, I watched that this week also because it's on Disney Plus. Uh, yeah, it's, for free. It's finally, out of the out of the premium version, so you can yeah. just watch it. Yep. I went into it not really knowing a whole lot about it, except Same that here. Aquafina was in it. <laughs> <laughs> and I love me Aquafina. She's she, awesome. She is so <laughs> weird of a of a character persona on tv because i've seen most of the movies she's been in and she's kind of the same throughout each of them the quirky little asian girl that gets away with a lot of stuff but she does it really good yeah and she's you know i think what i liked about her in this is that she was still herself 
but they allowed her to be this character who was not quite as over the top as Aquafina is. Do you think Correct. Crazy Rich Asians Aquafina versus this Aquafina was a little bit more subdued and it wasn't trying to force in so much of this bananasness? But there were some moments where it's like I, she must have ad libbed that because that was hilarious. Oh yeah, I'm sure <laughs> she did ad lib and just like threw some stuff in there. And you know, and we we watched it after having watched uh, last weekend. We watched Wonder Woman 1984. Mm-hmm which I don't want to talk about because I have all the feelings and anger about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very angry about it. But, you know, it it's it was the movie I wanted. Yes, when we watched it yesterday. And it was, it was it's always kind of going to be the movie I want. Yeah. When I go in and I want to watch a movie, it had the fight choreography was amazing. They did oh, some yeah. stuff on the bus. The bus scene is like one of the best fight scenes I've seen in a long time. Oh, I know. And like, oh, the bus scene is great. Um, the the sister is good. Mm-hmm. Um, the like all of the fight scenes were really solid. And anytime the rings came out, they were really cool. The the effect on the rings were really cool. Um, the the end credit cut scene, which I'm not gonna spoil. Correct. You can't spoil <laughs> that I laughed. I'm gonna tell you right now. Oh. So Wong is in this, we know that. Wong, I want a Wong TV series. Yes. I want a Wong TV series more than anything. He is an amazing oh, character that is underutilized in the MCU and should be used more. And I think he's going to be in the next, you know, the next phase. I he hope so. was he was amazing in the show. He was amazing in everything he's done in the MCU, and he was very enjoyable. And he wasn't even in it. He was in. He wasn't even really in it. Yeah, maybe fifteen minutes. Yeah. In this, and he was really, really good. But that end credit, and they did, they did miss something that they they should have pulled out in that end credit cutscene. But I, as I discussed with Tell, they probably couldn't afford to do that. <laughs> And again, no spoilers. No spoilers. They couldn't afford to do it. Um, I could tell you after stream, Gonzo, what I thought they should have okay. done. Okay. But yeah, like it was one of those things where you go from something like Wonder Woman 1984, which they bombed. Just, just, I'm. It oh, wasn't that great. I'm so angry about that movie. Um, to going to this, where there are better Marvel movies. Mm hmm. But this this continued what Marvel has been doing with their with their movies, where you had that kind of there was a, and there was a richness to the story that as they introduced different pieces of the story, it was so beautiful. There was so much just gorgeousness in it. At the beginning, I was like, I wonder how many people got pissed off because this movie doesn't start in English. Oh, uh, you know what's funny is I I was sitting there watching it, and like a lot of things that I have to do, I can't sit and watch TV shows. I usually have to do stuff, other thing. And I had to stop because it does not start in English. Uh, and I, I'm okay with that. There's nothing wrong with it because I know what they're trying to do with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not, you know, just having the language there just to have the language there. They're setting the tone and the characters and everything else. Uh, I will give yeah. you, this had some of the greatest martial arts I've seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is kind of the crouching tiger, hidden dragon wired type things, which is cool, but it was, it's not shaky cam and it's not all close up. It is wide shots. You can see the movement and the action and everything. Um, one thing I did find interesting is the rings weren't the main story. They didn't focus a lot on the rings and what the rings did. Until the very end. It was more about building the characters and building who they were, which I thought it was, was great. An ori- it was an origin story, and that was really nice. The one thing I didn't like is that they did a lot of reaction shots. There was a lot of cut away from the fight that's happening to what other people are, how other people are reacting. And that was like, okay, so you don't trust me to react to this appropriately. <laughs> I can like, see that. Okay, Aquafina is amazing, but should not do action, not do reaction shots. She had the same face in all of her reaction shots. <laughs> they did you dirty, girl. <laughs> you, you're so much better than this. <laughs> yeah. She was great. She was. I, I was kind of worried about her being in there because she's such an over-the-top character. But it was it was fine. And the ending, she her character grew. She wasn't the same, which was mm-hmm. great. 
There was uh, character growth. There yeah. was like kind of in a lot of the characters, there was character growth. And it was it was nice to see that and see it not just like all of a sudden they're different. There was change yeah. throughout versus uh, sometimes you get the OK, now I'm I'm this character. And by the end, it's like I'm this other character, but I didn't actually show you the change in me. I just am. I am this now. So okay. how many herpes do you give it? Let's see. Lower is better. Lower is better. I was I was gonna go with one. one I can see a herpes. one. It wasn't Cause... great. There was a little bit of small parts in there that were kind of like, okay, yeah, we get it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There okay, was, cool. There, there was some stuff they could have done better, and but it overall, I would watch that movie again. Oh yeah, I can see watching it again. It, it was it was a good start to the new phase of movies. So uh, I, I agree with you. One space herpy. Um, maybe one and a half, but I definitely cannot see a two out of it. Yeah. So I enjoyed it. Can't wait. Uh, the next Marvel we've got is what? Spider-Man? No Way Home is our next is one, it? which is December, which yeah. I can't wait for because uh, I When does the Spider- Hawkeye TV show come out? Ooh, I don't know. Let's Google that. Because there's already a spinoff for the Hawkeye TV show, by the way, which Disney said there's a lot of new shows coming out. Um, there is now a Groot TV show coming out. Oh, yeah, a, a cartoon. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I think it's supposed to be a baby Groot uh, TV show cartoon. I'm in. Yeah, they they made a lot of announcements. Uh, it's so cute. Uh, November twenty eighth or November twenty fourth is the start of the Hawkeye, so we have that okay. starting up. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of new Disney Plus. Marvel stuff coming out. Um, let me see if I can pull that up real quick. Because they made an announcement just recently. Um, yeah, let's see. Agatha Harkness spinoff. Um, Moon Knight TV show, which should be good. Um, She-Hulk, Miss Marvel. Uh, Echo, which is going to be introduced in Marvel. Uh, in the Marvel's Hawkeye. Um, X-Men 97. Uh, that explores new stories in the iconic 90s X-Men TV show, which, you know, that was really cool. Uh, Spider-Man freshman year. It's going to be a young Peter Parker in the MCU during the freshman years. Um, One I'm not really interested in, but I'll try it out, is Marvel Zombies. Um, Yeah, I'm just going to eh. I watched watched that What If episode. Not Uh, interested. I I, I don't think it's going to do really well. Um, do have Secret Invasion coming out with Nick Fury, and they showed a promo shot of him now without his eye patch. Ironheart, which is going to be the Iron Man female tech suit. And I Am Groot, a series of shorts following baby Groot as the sapling growing up among the stars. Give me the baby. Um, wait a minute. It's going to be a stop motion a- animation. <gasps> looks like. The stop yes. motion animator... <gasps> Kirsten LaProy is directing it. So maybe a stop action. I don't know. I'll wait that and see. That would be so good. So that would be interesting. Oh, All right. Mizzy, what you got for us? I watched the back of my eyelids. <laughs> That's all you want to go with? <laughs> um, I picked up stuff at Warfare Weekend. I can talk about that. Go for it. So obviously I got my drinking receptacle pint mug thing here. Um... I won a door prize, so I picked out a Trolls poster. Right, Kathy? Like, self-care is a thing. <laughs> Legit. Um, I got my dice. I picked up some stuff from Musa Minis. I got the Marvel Crisis Protocol uh, widget thingies. Tokens? Yeah, tokens. Those things. And then... I got a measuring kit for Warmer Hordes because I had fully intended on playing my very first game of my troll army, which did not happen because I was busy <laughs> doing literally everything else. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kind of how it goes. But, yeah. And what do you rate Warfare Weekend? Uh, zero space herpes. Like, highly recommend it. <laughs> Come see me and give me hugs, damn it. Maybe next year. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go with. Um, I'll, I'll finish it out unless you. Do you have something that you want to go with? V. V. Uh, 
I want to talk about Saga. Okay, so I'll, I'll I'll go and then I'll give you another one. Um, okay. I watched. Um, so I'm still watching Foundation. Still a great TV series. One of my top rated. I love it. I hate that it's on Apple TV, so a lot of the people can't see it. Uh, but it is one of my favorites. Um, I started Black Mass up, which is on Netflix. Um, I'm I don't know about this. Everybody says it's really good. I'm like three episodes in, and I'm kind of like, uh, okay. So I'm giving it a little time. Um, and then I finished Bla- Big Mouth, uh, the new season on uh, Netflix, and it wasn't that great of a season. Uh, I understand this is a cartoon about, you know, horny mm-hmm. teenage kids um, doing stuff. And so uh, it just wasn't as good. The jokes weren't as good. The story was just okay. So uh, it, the Black Mass, I'm going to give a final rating once I didn't finish watching it. Um, Big Mouth, it gets like a two and a half. It gives me my meh rating type thing. So I'll have to wait and see. Um, so go ahead and go with Saga. Yes. Saga is a web is a comic. It's not a web comic. It's a comic graphic novel written by Brian Vaughn and drawn by Fiona Staples. Mm-hmm. They started it a few years back and they took like a hiatus. They got about halfway through the story and took a hiatus. It's coming back in January. So I reread it. It's oh good. It's the story of a little girl who was raised by parents who are on, on opposite sides of a war. And it's in space, right? It's in outer space. It's in like a more fantasy kind of, it's a mixture of fantasy and Mm sci-fi. I can get out my lion cat. The best character is lion cat, who is the sidekick of one of the characters. And she tells you if someone is lying or not. She's perfect. I I know about Saga. I never read it. You should. It's it's excellent. It's got very good representation of characters. There, it's not a, like a lot of comic books. I'm currently back rereading Preacher, which ends up being a very kind of white male dominated comic. Saga is not that. No. Um, there is some content warning. There is sex and nudity and violence. <laughs> 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 um <laughs> thanks tell yeah it's but it's excellent storytelling it's it ended on a cliffhanger so i'm really happy that it's coming back in january because i want to know what happens to hazel and her family <laughs> it, it's the 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 artwork is breathtaking there are moments where like, you know how you, in comics you can get those really kind of expansive spreads on a page that just fill up the whole page, and and then you get those little kind of tiny moments, and the way that Fiona Staples handles that that work is just exquisite. And the, her attention to the just the right amount of details and the right details and focusing on what's important is just so lovely. Uh, I've known about the, the Saga comic. I've seen it, never read it. Uh, but everybody says it's a really good one. So what do you give Saga right now? I give it zero space herpes. I love <laughs> it so much. It was one of those things where I was kind of, when I first got into it, a friend and I, a friend I was working with, she's like, here's, here's these comics that I recommend to you. And Saga was high on the list. And I would wait for the next ones to come out. Like I need, to, I need to keep reading this because you just want to keep going and you get, involved with the family and you care about the characters it's really easy to care about the characters i love it so much <laughs> everybody should go out and, and read read it now i reread it because I, you know it's like and even re, even have even having read it multiple times prior to this last rereading i saw things that i didn't remember that I hadn't noticed before and there's just always something even though it looks like they're they're deceptively simple simple artwork and it, there's so much always something to find cool uh going on comics just a quick one uh sandman is coming out and they showed some uh shots from that and i can't wait to see that because the sandman was an amazing when, when i read it it was an amazing comic so i can't wait to see, oh, yeah. see that um, i'm also very excited for sandman but yeah. i'm just i'm like 
kind of holding my breath a little bit and trying not to get too excited. Yeah, because you don't want you don't want to be disappointed. Because I don't want to be disappointed. It's like I know that Gaiman's gonna do a good job because they did a, he did a good job with Good Omens. Yes. Yeah, Good <clears throat> Omens was great. I can't wait for the, um, they started showing see, pictures from the new season of Good Omens, and I'm like, I can't wait for that. I <laughs> I'm know. excited for it. Oh gosh, they like and. They could have swapped the casting on Aziraphale and Crowley, and it would have and Crowley. It wouldn't have been just as good, but the way they cast it, it's just perfect too. Yeah. Yes. Um. So my last one is it was on Apple TV. Is Finch? Finch is has Tom Hanks, a robot, and a dog. That's the entire cast of the entire movie. There's like some a few minor things that happen. Um that uh there's a few minor people in the show but they're only there for like five or ten minutes um finch is a story about a man that creates a robot in a post-apocalyptic world where pretty much um global warming is in its full thing you know massive storms you know the dreaded thing that we've all been uh talking about and you know trying to get things going um it is it's very interesting. The robot. Um, so Tom Hank plays Finch and he creates this robot to help him along. And it is actually f- the robot, which I won't spoil his name because it also comes in. It's part of the fun part of it, uh, of watching the show is really, really good. Uh, one, the seamless integration of the CGI with Tom Hanks is really, really, really good. I really liked it a lot. Uh, the dog is amazingly good too. Um, everything about the show, it, it wasn't hard to watch. It wasn't like overcomplicated. Uh, Tom Hanks, of course, is an amazing actor and can bring anything to life. Um, good range of emotions and such. Uh, there are a few sad scenes in it, um, but it is appropriate for what's going on. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of good fun. Um, it's a sad thing. Uh, I did watch some behind the scenes stuff on it and they said that they cut the ending where they cut it, but they had like another hour and a half of what happens at the end of it. But they were like, that's a whole different story. So they cut it at a certain point. Uh, and I saw it and I was, I was okay with it. It wasn't a big deal. Um, I thought it was really good. Um, acting is superb. Of course, Tom Hanks is amazing. The robot is done by a voice actor and that voice was done really good too. Uh, the dog's great. Um, not high action. So there's not like, you know, a ton of gunfights and stuff like that. Uh, it's a, it's an emotional piece, but I really liked it a lot. Uh, I give it one and a half maximum space herpes. I thought it was done really well. Um, a good flash in the pan type show. Um, would I watch it again? Uh, probably not, but I'd like to see more, of the robot and if they do another like a sequel to it it would be really cool so other than that um and hey look at that just at the right of time we are out um guys we appreciate you coming out v of course you're always welcome to be on the show um yeah. we'll have you on again when Thanks kathy gets me. back um, yeah. that way we can talk more of that and get all that going um Guys, also, can we give a shout out to V and her channel to make sure that uh, people can go there? Make sure you give her a follow. She streams a lot um, and all the time. I mean, it's like not all the time, <laughs> uh, but for sure tomorrow morning. We're we're at the new piano tomorrow, so yeah. So uh, give give a good shout out to her and go over and ch- follow her channel and just say hi. Uh, say that you uh, saw us uh, on more than nice. Uh, guys, also, don't want to forget our sponsors again, Muse on Minis. Make sure you check them out. And uh, also, uh, uh, Mini Masterworks for sponsoring the channel. Um, please take care of yourself. Please, please, please go get vaccinated. We want to see everybody at HugCon 2022. Um, and we are going to be sending you off to Eric Swenson. Uh, Eric Swenson was one of our painters at uh, Warfare Weekend. He's amazing. The guy is a lot of fun. He did the speed painting competition at uh, the convention, (laughs) which if you haven't heard about a speed painting competition, they give you a model. You have your brushes and your paint and you have two hours to paint this model. But in that two hours of painting that model, there's twists like he'll say you got to use your mouth. So you got to put the brush in your mouth. Um, 
then there's also not only like you had to paint with your elbow. So you had to put the, like the paintbrush in between your elbow and paint like that or paint behind your back uh, type thing. And whoever had the best looking model uh, did yes. it. So we're going to send you off to them. Um, but guys, please take care of yourself. We want to see you in a few months at HUDCon 2022. For more than dice, I'm Gonzo. I'm V. I'm Mizzy. Good night. <laughs> Y'all are being weird. You gotta be in the Discord for it. Gotta I hate Discord. Discord. Don't like Discord. Here comes a raid.